right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks a lot, Ken, and thank you for tuning into the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Rich Walsh. Give us a call tonight, 412 575 26 Zero, zero. Paul Zeiss is sitting right next to me. We're going to break it down. We're talking about the Steelers. Injury issues are the big topic right now. Ben Roethlisberger is dealing with an elbow. David DeCastro has a fracture in his hand. But the good news is Vance McDonald practiced today for the first time in, it seems like, forever. Uh, he missed all preseason, yeah. missed most of training camp. Um, he, and he's hoping that he could potentially play. So that's good news. As for Ben Roethlisberger, uh, he just had a veteran day off, he claimed, and uh, that won't be an issue. Uh, David DeCastro is the one injury I think we need to be concerned about, though, right? Yeah, well, especially if, when you listen to him talk about it. I mean, generally, yeah. guys don't talk about it that frankly. You know, usually they're, they're not that yeah. on, honest about it. He's like, well, it's worse than I thought. Um, so, yeah, with that, I mean, that's, that's an injury you have to watch. I don't think Ben's injury is an issue. No. I think, you know, it's uh, – I, I, I just – Hate to go here all the time. Yeah. But so you're seems, que- you're basically kind of questioning. I'm not that, but yeah. I mean, he's a, he comes coming off a you know a five interception game, and people are talking about his elbow. I'm not saying that. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Uh, I'm just saying it always is amazing to me when he has a really bad game. There's something else that we have to talk about. Yeah. So one of the questions we had out there, we do this KDK question of the day, and uh, my question today was, do uh, does Ben Roethlisberger had more touchdowns or turnovers this game. And I think it's a, a, a good question. I mean, I think you have to think about it because uh, what he did last week, but also he's a much better quarterback at home. I would ha- if I had to answer that question, I would say touchdowns. Um, Plus, but- I think the Chiefs defense thinks. I think that's another thing that people, you know, I don't know if you watched any of that Chargers game last week with the Chiefs. The Chargers scored 28 points. They dropped four touchdown passes. I mean, they literally could have scored 42 points in that game against the Chiefs. And, you know, I mean, I know Patrick Mahomes is now the flavor of the month and everybody yeah. thinks he's the greatest. I mean, I was watching Inside the NFL the other night with uh, Boomer Esiason and Phil Simms and, and Ray Lewis. Yeah. You know, that, have you ever watched that? Yeah, I've seen it. I haven't it's seen it this not week, a bad show. It's not a yeah. bad show, but... I mean, Boomer Esiason's talking about maybe Patrick Mahomes is the best, you know, best young quarterback in the league after one game. Wow. So, to me, you know, I got to see a lot more from him. He might be a good player. I mean, he might be a really good quarterback, but let's not lose our minds. And the other part of it is the Chiefs' defense is terrible. Yeah, you saw what the Steelers did last year, and they're missing some of those players, and they got some new players in there. I mean, they put, they'll put up 179 against this team. Yeah. So, I would imagine they'll be able to run again this Sunday, um, you know, as for uh, defensively for the Steelers and, and offensively, the one thing that they're going to have to worry about is Tyreek Hill, but they've done a good job kind of controlling him. Yeah. Um, you know, he's the big, he's, he's one of their explosive players, obviously. He had a big game last week, and they try to find different ways and be creative to get him the ball, which they should. Um, the big thing is don't kick it to him. That cuts down about half of, you know, his threat, if you ask me. Speaking of big games, and we'll take some phone calls about the Pitt Penn State game. Uh, 51 to 6. I'm not taking about the Pitt Penn State game, but 51 to 6. Uh, we would let, I would take them about Pitt Georgia Tech this week. Uh, this is a, I think this is kind of, you might think I'm wrong here, but this is kind of a must win for this team. Coming off a, a disastrous performance, uh, maybe where their confidence is low, the first ACC game, if they lose this, then who knows what could happen to this season. It's hard to be a must-win in three week three. I mean, if it's a, I mean, okay. Say they come out and they, they get blown out again, thirty one seventeen. They get blown out again and then they win their last eight games or nine games. I think it's hard and to win your last eight two. games when you get blown out twice. And they're and, ten and two. You know what I'm saying? I'm uh, just, yeah. I'm just. You never. Here's the thing. This game is a lot more important than last week's game. It's a much bigger game than last week's game. I know people don't want to hear that around here. Yeah. Here's one thing that Penn State uh, has done better than Pitt in terms of transitioning. Penn State has understood and they recognize the Big Ten is what matters. Pitt still thinks the Penn State game matters as opposed to the ACC is what matters. Yeah. So to me, this is a bigger game from that standpoint. It's a more important game from that standpoint. Um, and if they want to win the Coastal Division, I agree with you. They have to win this game. You, they're not going to win the Coastal Division if they can't beat Georgia Tech and North Carolina next week for that matter. 
Yeah. You've got to beat those two teams in Virginia and, you know, Duke and Wake Forest. Though you can't, and Syracuse. You can't lose any of those games if you want to win the Coastal. So, yeah, it's a big Yeah, game North game. Carolina, Syracuse, and Virginia are the, are the three games they must win. Um, you know, those are three games that, are, that should be say, gimme I, games. I would say this one, too. Yeah, I, I agree. I, mean, I think you, you, the, the Georgia Tech, they're an underdog, though, right? Ge- I think they're a four-point four underdog. Four-point underdog, of course. But my point is Georgia Tech is, what are they now, two and six in their last eight games against Power Five teams? Mm-hmm. I mean, Paul Johnson's on the hot seat there. The, the, this could be it for him. They just lost their best running back. Yeah. You, know, you got to beat. You got to win on your home field. If you want to, if you legitimately want to be taken ser- seriously as an ACC contender, you cannot lose this game. But theoretically, they could lose it and then come back and win eight straight or whatever. And yeah. you know, so. real quick before we go to break here, you know, speaking of hot seats, I know a lot of people on Twitter and Facebook and are talking about Paul Nar- uh, Pat Narduzzi being on a hot seat. I do not think that whatsoever. He could go two and whatever, and he wouldn't be on the hot seat this year. My opinion. Two and ten. Two and ten. I don't know. Heather Like is, you know, the one thing I will say is didn't they just give him like a, a seven, seven year extension? I mean, he's got yeah. a seven year extension. I think it, two and 10 would probably say, you know, next year you're definitely on the hot seat at, at the very least. I'm not saying he would, he would get fired at two and 10, but I wouldn't test that theory if I were him. Okay. But no, I mean, <laughs> Heather Like has made it pretty clear. She ain't playing around. Yeah. She's not playing around. So. All right, we got to take a break. Back with some of your phone calls, some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there. The Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call is brought to you by Ireland Contracting, Pittsburgh's number one home exterior expert in roofing, siding, windows, and gutters. 